Welcome back to the couch. I'm Dez. And I'm Jay. And this is our Logan review. Coming up next. Logan is a 2017 superhero film based on Marvel characters. It's directed by James Mangold from a script by Michael Green, Scott Frank, and Mangold. It stars Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Boyd Holbrook, Stephen Merchant, and Daphne Keene. It takes place in a bleak future and follows an alternative universe where an aged Wolverine and an extremely ill Charles Xavier defend a young mutant named Laura from villainous forces determined to control the evolution of mankind. We're talking about Logan. It is the third uh, Wolverine solo film, but it kind of just stands alone on its own. I think they all kind of do. He's a limo driver now. The opening sequence is the these criminal gang types are trying to steal what uh, his rims. He warns them, hey, you don't want to do this, guys, because he catches them. They don't heed the warning. And I loved watching that justice get served when it's like he tried to warn you and the R rating means we don't hold back. So this is the first time we get to see Wolverine really going nuts. It's the first time we got to see what he's really truly capable of when he's really pushed to his limit because there was a there was a point where he was just trying to diffuse and then he just kind of snapped and then off with everyone's head basically. Hugh Jackman's performance is just pretty amazing in this film, I think. We're getting a really beat down, worn out Wolverine. I like the way they did the opening sequence to let you know where he was at in life because you can physically see that he's gotten older, that he's aged. But after he dispatches of that gang and everything, you see him relegated to being like the lowly limo driver to trying to earn a buck here and there. And there's a scene where he's driving the limo and he drives right past the border patrol agent. So you kind of know that he's somewhere along the border now he's kind of just wandering around in life mm -hmm. wants to be left alone but has to make some kind of living so he has to interact with people while he's driving this limo around and that's working for him kind of he's really angry all the time so i don't know how much it's really yeah working it was for him. great because it kind of set the stage for the guy that we're dealing with very jaded and very just sick of the world and it sucks you right in it's like oh i want to see what happens let's go yeah this is exciting i'm in and it's not so extreme that it's not relatable either that's what's cool i mean you can at least see yeah i've been through that even if it's not to the level that we're showing through Logan's experiences. I like that we've all felt down, we've all felt alone, we've all felt like uh, everybody's out to get me at some point in life. And he's just like that all the time, unfortunately <laughs> yeah. for him. But, but it's cool because it's not a disconnect with me as an audience member. I like how this movie, it's not only independent of the first two Wolverine solo outings, it's actually kind of independent of all the X-Men franchise films. You don't need to really see any of them as long as you kind of know what the mutants are and the X-Men are right. going into Logan. That's really all you need to know. And I really love how they handled that. It's strange to me too, but it's a cool thing, I think, where the X-Men in this franchise, the movie franchise, it was kind of a one-time thing. They tried to do this superhero team thing and it ended with Dark Phoenix and all that stuff. And once all that got resolved, then the X-Men themselves kind of fell apart. And just to piggyback really quick on that, I love how they incorporated the X-Men comics. Like yeah, they're a real thing. Yeah, that was really thing. cool. You read these in your spare time? Oh yeah, Charles, we got ourselves an X-Men fan. You do know they're all bullshit, right? I mean, maybe a quarter of it happened and not like this. And in the real world, people die. And no self-promoting asshole in a f***ing leotard Logan. can stop it. This is ice cream for bedwetters. Logan. Your nurse has been feeding you some grade A bullshit. I don't think Laura needs reminding of life's impermanence. I don't think that was, I've ever seen that in a comic book movie before. To have it be weaved into the story, right. I really liked that. That was cool. It played a part in the story. It wasn't just there to be, hey, this is cool. Look at this Easter egg. I had forgotten about the noir version that they had done. Mangold had put together a black and white version mm -hmm. that got a very limited uh, theatrical release. And I hadn't seen it yet. So I thought, well, I've seen Logan before. Let's try it out in noir and see if it makes any difference. It didn't add anything to the story or anything like that but it definitely added to the mood. So I know this movie's mainly about Logan the Wolverine, but I gotta tell you, my very favorite character of this film's gotta be X-23, period, point blank, full stop, mic drop. That is my favorite character in this entire film. Daphne Keene, her casting and her performance were top notch. I thought it was a grand slam all the way around. It wasn't so much in the delivery of lines, it was more like in the nuanced things she did with facial expressions and conveying emotion. And even the action sequences, she had to, portray a certain level of physicality that was believable. And she pulled that off in great strides. She was awesome. They could have called it Laura instead of Logan and I still would have loved it. I mean, this is no kid actor here. You know, the typical kid actor at all. She is a great actress. Very, very good. I'd love to see her in more stuff going forward, honestly. I love how she lets certain things happen before she 
pounces. Like whenever she's attacking, she just lunges and it is just, she does not stop. And she is a force to be reckoned yes, with. Yes, she is. And she's a joy to watch even in those scenes, not the acting scenes, but the action scenes where mm -hmm. she's just ripping people apart. You don't mess with that. She's great. Dare I say she's in that Hugh Jackman, almost Robert Downey Jr. ilk, like where like that has to be Iron Man. That has to be the Wolverine. She has to be X-23. Her performance approaches that level where if they do future iterations of that character, it's gotta be her. Very strong statement, but I don't think it's wrong. The Fox-Disney merger is gonna is kind of throwing this into yeah, No Man's know, Land course, now. But Mangold was working on a sequel to Logan that focused on X-23. So hopefully something with X-23 still happens, but it's kind of looking iffy with you know Dis the Disney buyout. One of my favorite scenes in this entire film was when they were sitting down with that that family that they helped save the uh, horses or there were horses cows. that got uh, the horses spread that got out on the highway because of the accident that had right. happened on the highway. So you know they welcome him into their house and they have a good home cooked meal at the dinner table. So it was just that dynamic of that that normalcy that they that the Xavier X twenty three especially X twenty three and Logan never really get to experience in a family type setting. Well, when the horses are all spread across the highway, Logan wants to just drive off. Like he's made sure everybody's safe and it's like okay, not a problem. Let's mm -hmm. go. Xavier not only gets to be a hero again, he actually helps put the horses back. <laughs> Appreciate your help, No, we have to keep going. Someone will come along. Someone has to come along. Plus, they kind of help cause the whole thing to begin with. So it's like, come on now. We got to clean up this mess. Yeah. That's kind of like a, a fatherly type scene. The wisdom of the father and the kind of, you know, kind of passing that down that tutelage to what should be a pseudo type son. Well, yeah, Logan pretty much is his it's son. It basically yeah. is his mm -hmm. son. The great thing about this family on the farm that they end up befriending is in contrast to say the Russian family in Justice League, that family in that film just feels exactly like what it is, tacked on at the last minute. And the family that we run into for this brief part of the film in Logan, you end up caring about every single member of that family and what their fate is. And mm -hmm. they're in the film not much longer than the Russian family is in Justice League. I was really bummed that what happened to this family happened to him versus Justice League, which is a great comparison. They make it through the film and I didn't care. That was the first thing that came to mind is like, this is how you bring in minor characters mm -hmm. and have the audience care about them. This is how you do it right here. Watch Logan, you'll find out. After they have the dinner with the family, Logan has to take carry Xavier up the stairs to put him to bed. And it kind of shows yep. you, you know, it's like this real tender moment that you don't expect to see between these two characters. And that's one of my favorite moments in the whole film as well. And it contrasts really well with the moment earlier that they have where Professor X and Wolverine are in the car and they're arguing. They really start to go at each other. And at the end, Xavier sticks his tongue out at Wolverine. And I thought that was great because I'm like, this is really showing they can treat each other like this and they're cool. Like they have a very deep relationship yeah. that goes way back. Throughout the film, Logan is going out of his way because it's good for the world actually, but he has to make sure that his, his father is taking his medication. He's got to take him to the bathroom. I thought it was great actually how they showed that bathroom scene because my mind went there. Wow, that must be a real hassle. And then they go, yeah, it is. See, this mm -hmm. is actually what they have to deal with. Xavier has to sit there and do his new right. business while Logan's watching the right. whole time. It's just uh, yeah, overall yeah. awkward. It doesn't dwell on anything, but it, it's great because it shows you there's more to this than they're just mutants and this right. is heroes mm -hmm. and villains. This is trying to tell a real human story. A lot of real life people can relate to that situation. Yeah. If you've ever had to deal with the elderly or things of that nature. You don't have to be a mutant to live that kind of life. My favorite scene, it's a section of the film actually, is when Logan and Professor X have been separated. There's a criminal element after X-23, so they're after X as well. They're heading up to that room where he's at and he has one of his fits. And so ah, Logan has to yeah, get to him moment. and yeah. he's stabbing those people on the way in, in slow-mo slow and oh, yeah. it's great. <laughs> E 
easily my favorite part of the whole film. Hugh Jackman did a really great job playing dual characters in this film, you know, doubling as Logan and X-24. I think even though X-24 really didn't say anything, it was just that level of intensity was just a tick higher than it was for Logan. And he did a great job pulling that off. You're not going to get any mercy from X-24. That's mm -hmm. the difference. Yeah. He's a clone or whatever he is, but he's got none of Logan's sympathy where mm -hmm. he actually does care about people or will grant mercy in certain situations. Yeah, X-24 don't have any of that. Hugh Jackman expresses emotion in this film excellently throughout the whole thing. He has all this built up rage and feelings in him because X has now died because of the situation that he didn't want to be in with X-23. And so now his father is gone. And we get to a very heartbreaking scene where he's trying to give the eulogy over the grave. He's got water and He's got water. In that moment when he's trying to give that eulogy and he's, I'm sure, feeling the support of his newfound daughter, etc. And then he snaps out of it. You've got the sadness from Professor X dying. Of course you're bummed about that. But then when you're in the shoes of X-23, you know, she's really trying to find a way to connect with her father. And then in that moment, she has a little glimmer of hope and then it's just snatched from her. So, I mean, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There's a bunch of different layers, but... It's great the way they pull it off. And we get another major death in this scene. Not only does Professor X go, but we actually get the ending of Logan as well. I love how he went out. He sacrifices oh, himself yeah. for the good of this new generation of mutants. The world didn't think mutants could exist anymore. And now there is. There's this miracle generation mm -hmm. and he gives his life for them and i thought wow what a great ending to this character after all these years with him especially hugh jackman playing him the whole time like you better give us something good james mangold and company and they did there's a new crop of, of mutants out there now that have been through a lot and they deserve to live so he went out making sure that happened so yeah i totally agree it was a great way to end it we've talked a lot about earning things since we've been going through the dc films because a lot of stuff wasn't earned and mm -hmm. this is so well earned. Not all the X-Men films were good. Some of them were downright terrible, actually. But him as this character, it's almost like a real world thing is kind of mixing in here because Hugh Jackman's been playing this character for so many years as not only was this death earned as a character, it was also earned as kind of like, let's give Hugh Jackman, the actor, a good send off. Yeah, this was a great his character. by Oz for him. Yeah. Totally. Excellent, excellent work there. Was there anything you didn't like? There is one that scene that, that stuck out to me, it just didn't work. Maybe it's nitpicky on my part. When Logan got really ill and she got him to the hospital and everything, she's taking care of her dad and all that stuff. And she's like, chill, you need to rest. And then she drives the car to the final destination and she has to drive overnight. I just, it just didn't work for me. I didn't buy it. It did cross my mind that this kid's probably never driven a car before in her life. Mm -hmm. She grew up in a lab. I guess maybe Gabriella, I think her name was her pseudo mother that, that mm -hmm. saved her, maybe could have had her drive sometimes in situations with her possibly. But I think I just glossed it over maybe a little bit because of that. And also the shots that I remember seeing were basically a straight shot, long highway. And so I thought, well, this kid's 12 years old or whatever she is. She could probably figure it out being in the car with people at this by this point in her life. If she would have been on winding roads instead of trying to, then I went, okay, how did this kid get this driving experience? But it didn't bother me. I don't know if I have a lot negative to say about this film. And that's interesting. I usually have a couple things I want to pull out that could have been done better, but I think it was excellently done across the board. The element where you could kind of go either way with color or the, new, the noir or the black and white, like you had mentioned before, it also lends itself to that. When you factor that in, it's very little to dislike about this film. So the ending's great, and it may very well be the ending of the X-Men franchise as we know it. Uh, even though Dark Phoenix and New Mutants are mm -hmm. on the way, um, chronologically, this story kind of ends the X-Men franchise. It's however many years in the future. So I found that interesting too. And if it is the case, if Dark Phoenix is awful or it just doesn't work, Logan would make still just the perfect ending. I'm, I'm good with the franchise ending at Logan if, if that's what happens is what I guess what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's a great way to go out. Totally agree. So let's go ahead and sum up. For a guy that's not really well versed in the X-Men lore, I had a really good time watching this movie. It's very well paced, very easy to follow. There's a ton of action. It's dark. It's gritty. It's got everything you want to make this film awesome. There was really great acting because Hugh Jackman pretty much always delivers as this character. The casting of Daphne Keene I thought was superb and her performance was knocked it right out of the box. 
I'm a big fan of hers now. So I'm going to go ahead and give this film 4.5 out of 5 shiny bald heads. Logan is probably one of the best, if not the best film in the X-Men film franchise. It's a story about generations, about loss, about hanging on to what really matters to you in life and what's important. All of those themes are excellently executed by James Mangold and his filmmaking crew. And the acting, cast, everything is just top-notch. So I can't see giving Logan any less than 4.5 out of 5 shiny bald heads. It deserves it. Last time on The Couch, we reviewed John Wick. So if you missed it, now's a great time to check it out. If you enjoy what we're doing, please hit that like button and subscribe. To receive alerts when new videos are posted, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thanks for joining us on the couch.